Hello, we have already learnt what is growth and what is development. This is all. So, growth is a process where we are observing the things. It is increase in size, weight, everything is called as a growth. Whereas, development is an aspect which includes a growth. Development proceeds throughout your life cycle. This is all. So, we have seen the definition of growth and development. In today's class, let us learn about the principles of growth and development. When you look into growth and development, it is very important in the lifespan of an individual. What is the principles? Principles are nothing but the laws, is not the way in which growth and development proceeds in a human being is called as a growth. There are 11 principles which is concerned with growth and development. Namely, the first principle is the principle of continuity. What is continuity? Growth is a process where you are in an infant stage, you are growing up later. So, the growth is a continuous process. We can see that in the initial stages, during the early childhood stages, when you are in a, a 2 to 6 years like that, your growth is very uh, rapid. Thereafter, later in the later childhood, it reduces. Then again at the puberty stage, that is uh, your maturity age, where your growth is also enhanced. So, growth and development is going to be a continuous process. It's a development proceeds from the conception till death, the development proceeds. Though sometimes the growth is very small or meager in amount, it is a continuous process. That is why it is called as the principle of continuity. Then, principle of lack of uniformity. What is lack of uniformity? That not that every person has the same rate of growth. You can see. Some of uh, your friends will be growing in their height when they are in their puberty station. Suddenly they increase in their height, but not like others, is it not? So, there is a lack of uniformity among the individuals. Then, principle of individual differences. You know that the same child within the family, if there are two or three children in the family, not that everybody develops in the same level. There are individual differences because based upon your hereditary, the food you provide, the mental and the physical state also determines your growth and development. That is why it is called as a principle of individual differences. Then, principle of uniformity of pattern. What is uniformity? Everybody, we are all human beings, is it not? We have the same pattern of development in our life. Take for example, first in your body parts, when a newborn child you observe it, when you observe a newborn child, what do you see? The head portion of their uh, body is very larger in size. Then what happens when they grow up in the later years? The size of the head is reduced and the body parts length is increased. So it is the same for everybody. So that is what it is called as a uniformity of pattern. Take for example, for a newborn baby, you can see that their uh, uh, head portion is very large when compared with the trunk and the other lower parts, is it not? Later when they mature, this head portion is reduced but all the other parts is growing in length, okay? That's why this one is a uniformity of pattern. Then, principle of general to specific response. What is that uh, general? So, take for example, if I give a child a newborn, uh, take for example, not a newborn, I am just going to give a small doll to a 2 years baby. What, how it holds a doll? It will hold it like that. Is it not? Then, what happens when I give the same doll to a 3 or 4 years old boy or a girl? What happens? They hold it with a single hand or a finger. Is it not? So, their response is changes. And another way, you can see that uh, normally the infants cry for anything. It might be for their food or for the uh, attention, to seek the attention of the parents. But what happens later when they mature, when they reach the next stages, when they develop, they will be crying in different ways. Take for example, if they want food, they cry in a different sound, they produce a different sound. If they want their mother or somebody to come near them, they make some other sound. Is it not? So, the, the responses changes from general to specific. Specific specific means for a particular thing, they will make a specific reaction. Okay, that is called as a principle of general to specific response. Then the next principle of integration. What is integration? Integration is nothing but combination or combined in nature. Take for example, when we are growing up, 
our internal organs also grows along with them. So you can see that uh, if your um, external body parts is uh, increasing in your length, everything, internally also the organs get more uh, structurally and more uh, functionally elaborate in their nature. That is why it is called as a principle of integration. Whenever you grow, all the other growth and development is integrated together. Take for example, if you are increasing your height, automatically your internal parts, your organs, everything get more structurally and functionally mature. Okay? Then, principle of interrelation. What is interrelation? Everything is linked together. Not that you grow up, your mind, your uh, emotional development, your physical development, your social development, everything is linked with the society in which you live. So, it is interlinked. That is why it is called as a principle of interrelation. Then, principle of interaction. What is interaction? Our growth and development is depending upon the environment in which we live. Isn't it? Take for example, if you live in an environment which is very happy, which is very conducive, your growth and development is also more. You can see this in the case of the children. Uh, a child who is born in a parents with a very good uh, education and rich family, they mature, they have, they have everything, very good growth and development. If it is in the case of a poor family, they have stunted growth, they are uh, uh, very de deficient in nutrients, they have all these things. Okay? So that is the principle of interaction. Then what do you mean by principle of predictability? Predictable is nothing but, we can say, if uh, if at this age he is of this height, when you mature, he will be of this much height. If he is having intelligence now, at 3 years he has this much intelligence. Then, when the age of 10, he might be having this much intelligence like that. So, the growth and development can be predicted. Okay, that is why the principle of predictability. The principle of developmental direction. What is developmental direction? Your growth and development proceeds in a direction. Take for example, what is that direction? One is called as a cephalocardial. Another one, proximo distal. What is cephalocardial? That is, the growth proceeds from head to foot. Head to foot. You can see the newborn infant is having a very big, uh, uh, huge portion. That is, the head portion will be very big. Then what happens later when they mature? It reduces in size in the foot region. The length of the legs, the arms, everything increases. That is why it is called as a head to foot. This direction is called as a cephalocardial. What is the meaning of uh, head to foot development? It is called as a cephalocardial. And then what is proximal distal? Proximal distal is that where the directions, take for example, I already told you, mandible. Then what is proximal distal? It is the direction where from the center to the periphery. Take for example, from the middle to the side. Proximo distal, that means from the center to the periphery. Uh, take the example, when uh, in a 0 to 2 years, baby get over the dollar, it will hold it like this, is it not? But when it matures, it can hold it by the hand. In the development proceeds from the center to the periphery. From the center to the periphery. Then, the principle of spiral development. Spiral means what? We proceed from a single cell, then we multiply. Again, the growth is like this. The principle of growth and development is that we proceed in this direction. Principle of spiral development. We start from a single initial cell and our growth and development proceeds. We elaborate, enlarge and our development proceeds like this. That is why the principle of spiral development. I hope now you are clear with the principles of growth and development. What are they? Principle of continuity, principle of uniformity, principle of individual differences, principle of uniformity in pattern, principle of general to specific response. Then, principle of integration, principle of interrelation, principle of interaction, principle of predictability, principle of developmental direction that is cephalocardial and proximodistal. 
and then principle of spiral development. So, totally 11 principles.